And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is Auckland's Mayor John Banks. John is on the campaign trail seeking to be our Super City's first Mayor. Taking time out from a very busy schedule, John is in the studios tonight of The Beat Goes On to give us a quick update on progress so far. We welcome John Banks as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. John Banks, the Mayor of Auckland City, the 38th Mayor and possibly the last Mayor yes. of Auckland. Yes. But maybe... Maybe. The first Mayor of the Super City of Auckland. Well, we no only need 450,000 and one vote because we've got 900,000 on the roll, the electoral yes. roll. So we only need one additional one to the majority. So well, we need to find out who that one person is, John, and get to them. Yes, yeah. it could be you, Jared. <laughs> yes, it could be me, couldn't it? Could be you. John, uh, just before you came on, we, uh, we had Archibald and Shorter, Richard mm. Holden from Archibald and Shorter. Now, I noticed that your second name is Archibald. Are mm. you a relation of the Archibald and Shorters? Are you? There's no relationship there. I'd like to think I was. <laughs> I'd like to think I was. They're a wonderful company with a great heritage in Auckland. I knew uh, uh, Mr. Shorter Senior. I bought my first Jaguar XJ6 in 1968. Wow. I think it cost me 3800 uh, Magnificent Jaguar XJ6. And I bought about five Jaguars from Shorter's. Mm. Uh, I think they were in Shortland Street at the time, and there yeah. were the brothers there, all mm. the brothers, wonderful, wonderful Martin family. Martin David, yes. Uh, very good people, and Paul, mm. uh, and, um, and now, of course, uh, Archibald and Shorter are the premium uh, dealers of Jaguar across the country. They're very good people. And they've got this beautiful new uh, XJ just arrived, fabulous car, and yeah. both Richard and I said, you should have this car as the new mayoral car, John. So what's the chances? You'll be giving Archie Bull and Shorter a ring. Well, yes, I will. The proposition that we can get a mayoral car that costs the rate pass, absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Gifted to the city as a sponsorship car, and we can even have their name on the bottom. That's how, yeah, I'll be giving them a call. <laughs> That's one great thing about you, John. You've always been conscious of the fact that you're not going to spend the ratepayers' money. So where did that come from? Oh, well, uh, living in welfare homes. Yeah. Uh, going to bed hungry at night and waking up wondering where the next feed's coming from. So I think that... Um, you went through all that, oh, didn't you? Of course. You, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, I've been taught to be frugal, especially with other people's money. Now, you were always a great champion of the one super city, weren't mm -hmm. you? How much will we save? I mean, where's the advantage going to come from? Well, I've been a champion of integrated water, vertical integration of water. In other words, right now today, we have a water wholesaler mm -hmm. that sells water at the same price to seven water retailers across Isthmus Water, Auckland, and they sell it at different prices. Uh, people in Waitakere buy their water for a different price from people on the shore, people on the shore different from Auckland City. What we've learned this week is that with one wholesaler retailer, Mm -hmm. One bureaucracy supplying water, owned by the people, supplying water across Auckland. There's $40 million worth of savings in year one alone. That's amazing. Yeah. $40 million in savings. Mm -hmm. So if we get rid of seven councils, seven bureaucracies, seven structures, seven mayors, uh, seven different replications of district plans, and we have one song sheet and we sing from the same tune, then there must be economies of scale, mm. savings and efficiencies. And that's what I want. On day one, smooth transition. Day two, we start the savings. Day three, economies of scale. Day four, we hold rates to within inflation. And I've held rates to within inflation every year I've been in office. So they're the challenges. What are some of the projects that you know are going to be much easier now than they were, say, um, well, last week, for instance, to get through with having one super council? Well, um, for instance, transport decisions. All of the transport decisions, the big transport decisions for Auckland today take nine signatures. On day one, one signature. Yeah. So uh, instead of having to round up black cats in a dark room, <laughs> at least we'll only have one black pussy in one dark room. And hopefully that's easier <laughs> if you get the drift. I'm mixing metaphors here yes, and it's exactly. not that good, but I'm trying hard. And we're having marvellous uh, results in getting people out of cars and into public transport, people out of cars and into buses. If you took all of the people that came to Auckland City today out of the buses this morning, 
there'd be 19,000 additional cars in Auckland City this morning. Chaos. We've, chaos. chaos yeah. We've had huge growth in integrated public transport usage in Auckland City in the last 12 months, 18% increase. Because we can't keep just building roads. We have to complete the motorway network, of course, but now we need to get the buses working, now we need to get the trains working, and now we need to get people into the ferry services as well with one ticketing scheme. One ticket buys passage to all of those usages. Now, John, of course, on close-up the other night, uh, uh, hard being a parent, isn't it? You were talking about uh, your son's involvement with the... Uh... Well, my son was involved uh, with other young kids from King's College at a private party where a young boy drank a full bottle of vodka and subsequently died. It was a terrible, terrible tragedy for the young boy and certainly for his family that are left grief-stricken. I met the family. Mm -hmm. Most of the parents wouldn't go near them but I decided because my boy was at the party that I should uh, step up like a man and uh, meet the family and take my responsibility because my son was there. And so it was very hard, uh, but uh, a difficult time. Uh, the bottom line is this, we've got a binge drinking culture across New Zealand, particularly in Auckland uh, and around uh, many of the schools, uh, some of them the private schools where kids come from the best homes, and in other schools where kids come from the socially deprived homes, no one is exempt. Mm. Being a father, you're never exempt. Being a father, you're a father until you die. Yes. You're a father of your sons and your daughters until the end. We're all in this to the end. And I honor fatherhood and I honor uh, mothers and the role that they play in shaping the destiny of a country. And we've got this shocking binge drinking culture where did it come from? How, oh, I don't know. Like that, um, I don't think we were like that. I'm not mm. sure, uh, and I'm not being a goody two-shoes here. It seems like a rite of passage to get legless. And, Ooh. Uh, and, and, and it's wicked. Uh, alcohol and drugs are taking a big chunk of our youth to oblivion, mm. uh, two or three nights a week. What sort of a chat did you have with your boy? How did you handle it? Well, I said to my, my boy didn't clearly understand at that time, and... Uh, maybe it was my failings uh, as a father, he didn't clearly understand that if you drink half a bottle of vodka, if you guzzle it in 20 minutes, it can kill you. Mm -hmm. If you guzzle a bottle of vodka, the whole bottle, uh, in 20 minutes, it's likely, likely to kill you. He didn't clearly understand that. So after this terribly sad occasion, I dragged my si son aside and said, listen lad, no more going out at night because you're dangerous. No more going out at night because you clearly under, don't understand how bad alcohol can be to you and your mates. So I'm going to put you on a three-day St. John's uh, comprehensive first aid course where they'll teach you mm -hmm. that drinking alcohol in moderation is okay. Uh, drinking at an extreme and binge drinking is no, no, no. And if you see someone doing it, you should say no, no, no. And if you see the consequences of that, you ring 111. Mm -hmm. And maybe that little guy would be alive today. And that was the message that I gave my son. 